Hey, good morning everybody. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades of experience as a painter and a craftsman, a colorist, a restorationist to answer any of your uh, painting and business questions live here. So, okay, there we go. So, uh, today is a very special show because uh, it is my one year anniversary of doing Ask a Painter. This is episode number 52. It's a weekly show. Uh, I've been answering these questions weekly for the last year. I've been having great interactions with homeowners, with uh, professional painters, things like that. It's been unbelievable. And uh, in the last month or two here, we have uh, partnered with the PDC, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America, to not only uh, bring you the contractor side, but then the uh, you know, the, the homeowner side as well, from the Ask a Painter. So now it's a marriage of both worlds, and uh, this is a uh, forum here uh, for professionals and homeowners to interact. And any questions we have, whether it's entrepreneurship, business, marketing, uh, even paintbrush selection, uh, things like that, that's what this is all for here. So uh, we are going to have, as usual, uh, the contractor question of the week. Uh, and the other thing I want to mention to you guys is anybody who asks a question in the comments section below here during the live show will be entered to win one of my brand new Ask a Painter t-shirts brand new Ask a Painter hats and I'll of course send you some of the mugs uh, so you can be part of the mug club too. So uh, today uh, a couple things I'm looking for from contractors. Uh, I need some uh, roller suggestions. Um, my go-to roller for stucco uh, has been uh, Wooster Superfabs uh, inch and a quarter. Uh, I thought they made inch and a half a while ago but uh, inch and a quarter is readily available either the uh, Superfab or the Superfab FTP. So um, if that's kind of been my go-to, seems to do well for rolling stucco. If you contractors or homeowners have used something that really works well, let me know. Also, I'm looking for uh, you know nine-inch version. Uh, I'm also looking for uh, the shorter, I believe, the four-inch version like that too. So, if anybody has any suggestions, definitely sort of uh, you know let me know what works for you. Uh, also, uh, I have uh, a bunch of kind of go-to glazes for cabinets. Uh, if any of you guys uh, on painted or, or varnished cabinets have a particularly good glaze, and, and the thing that I'm looking for in a glaze for these is, is a super long open time. I don't care if it's, if it's open or wet for over 24 hours, I just need something with an insane amount of open time in it. So if anybody has any suggestions, let me know there too. Uh, and then, uh, oh, the only other thing too is that, uh, you know, I've experimented with amending the paint or changing my paints uh, over the last 20 years here uh, with different things. Uh, I'm curious how everybody does uh, their exterior paints, whether you're doing stucco, whether you're doing uh, hardy LP siding, uh, wood siding. Do you add anything to your paint? Do you add water? Do you add Floetrol? Do you add uh, Benjamin Moore extender? Do you add things to either speed up the drying, slow down the drying, things like that? So uh, I want all the contractors to uh, to kind of let me know what you guys are doing and then at what amounts, and, and I'll kind of share my, my experience as we do that there. So uh, we are going to get to the uh, contractor question of the week here. Uh, this one comes from uh, Wenzel from Puckville, Michigan. Uh, I've been a contractor for six years now. I struggle to master the work-family split. Uh, I want to. I want a successful business, but I'm getting pressure uh, from my spouse to spend more time at home. How do you manage this? So, I thought that I would. Uh, I would kind of walk through a day in the life of sort of an entrepreneur slash craftsman. Uh, I, 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 I've realized over the last year or two here that uh, the, the biggest benefit that I offer to other, other painting contractors and to homeowners is the fact that I am very up to speed on coatings and the applications of coatings because I'm actually in the field doing it. Now, at some point though, you know, as the business grows, as I'm up to, you know, nine or ten employees, I have to do more logistic work like that too. So. Uh, over this past year, I've actually come up uh, the first time in, in my 10-year business career of owning my own business, I've actually laid down a formal plan uh, to end up spending more time with the family and then also having the business grow a little bit here too. So, um, I'll give you a little bit of background and then we'll go into sort of the day in the life of a painter. So. Uh, ten years ago, uh, I had uh, I got out of the military, I went to college, uh, specifically to run a small business like this. Uh, I, I was not able to join my family business. My father didn't have a spot uh, in it for me. It surprised me a little bit, but I went off on my own. Uh, and then the the sort of unique situation that I was put in was that uh, I was competing against my own family business in my hometown, and 
uh, my last name being Slavic, I've been associated with painting for decades and decades in my hometown. And there were two painting companies in town that, that bore the Slavic last name. Yes. And, you know, obviously my father being well, the one who had been around a lot longer. So I didn't want to take any chances uh, that this business would fail. So basically I just said, you know, anytime I'm not sleeping, I'm devoting to this business and I'm going to make sure that you know it, it, it succeeds. If this business failed, I would have moved out of this town and found some other place to live. So I figured, you know, I like my hometown. I wanted to stay there. And, you know, from sun up to sun down, I basically took care of my customers. All I did was you know whatever my customers need if they want estimates at odd times I gave them free color consultations all this other stuff anything I could do uh, come about year eight maybe a year or two ago I started I, I finally figured that you know I this business isn't going to fail uh, if, if I'm doing what I need to you know the basics of the business well so now I'm starting to figure out you know the more work family life I have four young kids at home I have four kids under the age of nine and you know when the kids are much younger uh, my wife has way more to do with the kids and now that they're a little bit older uh, you know there's a lot of activities lots of things so I want to be around for that so this year uh, and, and starting with about a year and a half and especially this year I laid down a formal plan uh, uh, to sort of spend more time with the family so uh, before I go into sort of the day in the life of a painter I will mention that uh, you know again today anybody who uh, who puts in a comment uh, excuse me who puts in a question for me down below here uh, will get entered in to win one of my brand new t-shirts brand new hats and I'll also send you mugs from the car part of the mug club there too so questions below contractors uh, homeowners I want to hear all your questions this week so um, okay day in the life of a painter I break up my uh, my days by sort of seasons uh, my year is split into two big chunks I have six months outside six months inside my inside year is sort of my get your business in shape uh, everything that needs to be done you know get get uh, uniforms ordered get uh, hats get mugs made get all my marketing done for the year you know, book work in shape, plan for the next year, uh, do maintenance on the vehicles, maintenance on the sprayers, and then summer we basically just go like hell. Uh, my days in the winter, my, my six months of winter work, I'm normally eight to four, I'm working with my crew at various jobs. Uh, I Every day, uh, I, I found that this has worked out really well for me. I'm up at four o'clock every day, uh, mainly because uh, I get done at uh, four o'clock every day. I come home, I try to have a little dinner with the family, uh, and then I used to go out on estimates uh, between five and nine, Monday through Thursday. So I spent a lot of time away from my family. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, between about, in the winter, between four and uh, seven, uh, every morning I would take care of book work, I would take care of marketing, I would uh, you know, go through all my supplies, uh, get all that stuff taken care of, mainly because if I came home in the evening and tried to do that with all my young children around, I wouldn't be able to sufficiently do all the work that my business needs, and I would also not be spending the time that I need with them. So, uh, you know, that quiet time, that cool time, that dark time in the morning that I can just get down in my office and get stuff going right away. Uh, I pride myself on being almost overly efficient with my time where, you know, if the alarm clock goes off at 4, at 4.06, the coffee's in my hand, I'm already at my computer going away. Because if I'm going to get up that early, I'm not going to waste a second of that time. So in the winter, 4 to 7, work on my business, you know, between 7 and 8, load up the trucks, get ready for the cruise. We go uh, 8 to 4 work, at 4 I'm done, and then spend time with the family. I used to do estimates in the evening. Uh, this last year, I've moved my, uh, uh, for the first time in 10 years, I've actually moved my estimates to Mondays only now during the day if I can. So it's a huge change for me because I actually leave all my crews and sort of set them up and let them work while I'm out around doing, you know, what, uh, what most business owners do in, in my shoes is out there sort of running the business. Uh, so that's been a huge change for me. I, I don't do the evening estimates anymore unless a good client of mine or somebody just physically can't make a Monday morning estimate. Uh, so then, you know, we, we try to take care of it that way. Now, the second part of my year, uh, my, my summers, uh, up at 4 a.m., uh, work on my business between 4 and 5.30 in the morning, and then uh, my entire uh, set of apprentices, uh, we all start work at 6 and we work till 4. We put in 10-hour days. Because uh, here in Minnesota, there's always a lack of days where we can do exterior work, so we just go like hell. Five days a week, ten hours a day, you know, somewhere between eight and ten employees going at once. And uh, you know, when when I when when I tell somebody come the fall that you know I'm sorry, I just I don't have time for your house. They, I can look them in the eye and honestly tell them. I have used up every second of summer, no matter what, uh, running from sunup to sundown, trying to get to you. 
uh, and then now, uh, you know, in the summer too, with my Mondays, I usually schedule my, uh, my uh, estimates and all that stuff. And I try to do between about 10 and 15 estimates on a Monday. Some I have to meet with homeowners and some people just, you know, send me stuff or it's for businesses, things like that. So, you know, that, that's basically my, uh, you know, that's basically my year. I've broken into, into two chunks like that. Um, I really enjoy the business part of the business, but I also enjoy the painting side. So I'm always torn between the two of, you know, if I'm spending too much time on the business side, I always feel like, you know, I, I need to be out there painting a little more. I get that itch to do it. If I'm just painting, I can feel the bookwork and, and the stuff sort of start piling up like that. So the best thing that I can tell you, uh, Wenzel, is that the, the kindest thing you can do for your family is have a stable business. So. Uh, instead of saying, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, uh, you know, spend a lot of time in the business, spend a lot of time here, you know, try to manage that now. The best thing you can do as a young contractor is make sure you have a stable business. Once your business is stable, then you can start paring back and taking more and more time for the family. But th this is a process where if you're, if you're too divided uh, between that stuff and your business a little, is a little unstable, but you still have to spend a lot of time at home or, or you're neglecting your business, that, that sort of stability process could last 10 to 20 years of you trying to establish it. And it's not good for your family at home. So my thought process was always the kindest thing I could do for my family, especially when I didn't have that many kids at home, was to spend every waking second of my time making sure that this is good, it's running, that we don't have to worry about this. That way, you know, it's we can spend more time in the family. So. Uh, compress it. Use your time wisely. Make sure you have a stable business. After that, then start seeing what you can not get away with, but what you can, the, the minimal amount of time you can uh, put into your business. Uh, still have it produce whatever income you need, but then also, you know, uh, spending time with the family, having vacation time, things like that. So uh, that's uh, that's been a real important thing for me. Um, and now, you know, as, as the crew swells and we're getting a whole bunch of apprentices, I find myself doing a lot of a lot of training time. Uh, a lot of logistics. We're going through jobs at an a extremely fast pace, so I have to just meet with that many more homeowners to do colors, to line up work, uh, to line up materials, and things like that. So, right now, I feel that uh, you know, uh, I, I'm. This is a constant improvement process for me. That uh, I know that somewhere between four and six and seven employees, somewhere right around there, I have that home to a razor's edge. Now, as we approach, you know, nine and ten. Uh, it's a different thing. It's not just adding two or three more. It's a it's a little different way of. Uh, it seems like there's a critical mass that you hit with employees where you know one person and maybe one or two pickup trucks uh, can sustain all of that work. And now as you get a little bit more, all of a sudden it changes a little bit. The uh, you know the sort of uh, the sort of metrics of the business change. You know? Seven employees versus ten is not just three more. It's it's probably sixty percent more work that's to sustain those last ones there. So that's sort of what I'm. So that's sort of where I'm at right now. And uh, you know, I uh, it helps that I have a wife who's fully on board with this sort of thing. Uh, you know, she understood that going against your own family business is an important thing, and she likes my hometown too. And, and we're not going anywhere. So it's a very very important thing. Uh, that she basically just let me devote every second of my time to my business and very quickly, within about six or eight months, bam. You know, I've always had a full schedule and it was because I was basically given the leeway to, to say, I'm going to devote everything to this and it paid off because now it's, I, I really pare back my time. I have evenings with my family. Uh, my One of the interesting things is I used to, with my old family business, Saturday was a definite uh, work day and if something had to be done, uh, you would work a half day Sunday. And, uh, you know, within about a year or two of uh, owning my own business, my wife just said, hey, just promise me you're not going to work weekends anymore. And it was one of the hardest things to give up that I've done because I was sort of raised, you know, this is what a man does. He goes out, he provides for his family, and he works every second of the day. And in hindsight, it was actually very foolish. You know, I needed to maintain that, uh, that family time uh, with, you know, with my wife and then with my kids, too. So... It was, it was one of the hardest things I had to give up is working weekends, but it was absolutely the best choice early on that I made. And now I'm going from, you know, a complete evening schedule, um, you know, to just Mondays. Uh, still difficult for me, hard to give up that evening time, uh, hard to give up my time with my crew, but uh, I know at the end of the year it's the right choice. It's something that I have to do in this stage of business. Here, so. um, okay, uh, mention again here, uh, anybody who ask me a question during the live feed down below here. Uh, you'll be entered to win one of my brand new Ask the Painter shirts. 
Uh, I'll send you one of my brand after painter hats, and we'll also go, uh, I'll, I'll send you one of the mugs. You can be part of the mug club as well, too. So, uh, also, contractors just joining, uh, I'm looking for suggestions uh, for large NAS roller covers. Uh, at least inch and a quarter. Uh, I use super fabs uh, for exterior work like this where you don't have to worry about shedding. Uh, inch and a quarter, either the FTP or the regular super fab. I'm also interested what other roller covers you guys use for the big stuff. If you got rough surface, at least inch and a quarter, something that works well and stays stiff all day. I'm also looking for suggestions for cabinet glazes, your favorite cabinet glaze. And the thing I'm looking for in a cabinet glaze is an extreme open time. We're talking somewhere between you know, 8 and 24 hours of open time where you can kind of doctor it up like that. So, uh, what else am I looking for here? Oh, uh, how how you contractors amend your paint? Uh, here in Minnesota, it, <laughs> it's been insanely hot. Uh, it's been high 80s, and this next week it's going to be mid 90s. Uh, it hasn't been humid, which has been odd, but uh, pretty soon it will be humid as well. So I'm wondering how you contractors when you're running outside do you use your flow chal, do you use a more extender, do you use something to speed up the drying, do you use something to slow it down? How many of you guys are using water? Uh, you know, depending on what the technical data sheets say, what have you found works and doesn't work? Have you been able to, you know, bump up against some of the tolerances there? Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's go through some some questions here. See how's everybody doing? Chris Shank, good to see you, my friend. Gary Hartman, a local fellow, thank you so much, sir. Chuck Kartak, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, James Gilbert, thank you for watching as usual, and Juliana Alcantara, obrigado, my friend. Thank you, uh, thank you for the United States, to all my friends in Brazil down there. Uh, you guys have been great to interact with. I, I really enjoy seeing, uh, you know, the different coatings, different methods. Uh, you guys are super resourceful down there. It's amazing to watch some of your work. Uh, uh, Tim and Amy Lemke, thank you so much for watching. Justin Orr, thanks for watching, my friend. Thank you guys for sharing this as well. I, I do appreciate it here. Uh, Luiano, thank you so much. Uh, I put a uh, I put a mug and a, and a shirt on a steamer ship, sent it down to Brazil for him. So I'm glad he finally got it. Joe, good friend of mine. Joe Wonder, thank you for watching. Jessica, cousin of mine, thank you for watching. I'm up I'm up in your neck of the woods today. Terry Leuski, thank you so much for watching, and, and thank you, uh, Terry, and the rest of your family there at Scott Equipment. You guys have been giving me a lot of projects this year, and uh, it's always good to work with you guys. So. Thanks again. I was actually just doing some industrial epoxy in your new Prag plant. So, uh, James, <laughs> early bird gets the worm. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, uh, sometimes you're forced to get up that early. Sometimes you do it just for fun, uh, for thrills. But either way, it's it's productive. You know, uh, Juanita, thank you for watching as usual. Uh, James, with all the employees, do you use a payroll company? Uh, I used to use ADP. Uh, then you know I started getting automatic price increases without acknowledgement or without notice so I stopped that and actually went to a local firm here I switched my accountant uh, two three years ago because uh, as the business was growing I felt that I would be better served by, uh, by a little bit larger firm but still made up of all local people familiar faces in my hometown some a firm that's had a long track record and uh, uh, I actually look for a firm that will actually help me be a business advisor as well if somebody just says hey listen all I want to do for you you, you hand me your file of stuff for taxes, your income statement, your balance sheet, and I'll take it from there. I don't want to I no advice, no nothing. I'll just file your taxes. That's not who I want to work with. Uh, CSSW in, in New Prague there. Uh, I've known them for a long time. I know almost everybody in that place. And uh, I basically just show up and I said, here's my business. Let's, let's start honing this to a razor's edge. And uh, having somebody to say, well, you know, you should be thinking about this, Nick, or here's something we can fix for you. Here's how we can streamline something. Or here's a, here's a liability that you might be open to that you maybe need to close. Uh, it's it's wonderful to find somebody, uh, and, and I put together a string of this, you know, between uh, business owners, uh, consultants in New Prague, are sort of the uh, elder statesmen of New Prague. Uh, you know, uh, some people who've been in business a long time, uh, bankers, uh, my financial advisor, all those people I kind of group together, and they're sort of my ad hoc board of directors when I have a big question. When I have a large question, you know, should we buy a piece of land? Should how many trucks should we have? And what do other companies do? They're always there to give you another perspective because I'm on such a little island here, uh, you know, working this. I don't have a lot of interaction with other painters besides the PDCA uh, and and uh, you know online here now. But it's not the same as actually being face to face and having somebody to give you that um, advice, especially uh, financially uh, for your company, is a huge deal. So. 
Yes, I use a uh, payroll company. Uh, that I used to use ADP. I switched them because of the automatic increases. I actually have my accounting firm uh, do my payroll now, and they do it for about a third of the price, which is really awesome. I, I had a hard time leaving ADP because you think, well, they're the biggest, they're the best, but service wasn't all that great, and uh, automatic price increases wasn't uh, wasn't very thrilling to me. So. I, I approached my local uh, people who did my taxes and, and they gave me a price quote on it and I was just shocked. Um, I have local people, I have face-to-face -face interaction and they do it for way less than what ADP was doing and uh, it's just the service is way better. So that's a win-win for, for everybody around and I'm keeping my money local too which is also a big thing for me because I expect that from other people too. So, uh, but yeah, definitely uh, James, if uh, start collecting advisors uh, if, if you have somebody working for you you're paying them for a reason and pick their brains squeeze every bit of advice out of, out of people like that because uh, they're experts in the field just like you're probably an expert in your field so they'll, they'll ask you questions you ask your questions and that's what you're all there for and man when you can find people that you trust like that your business is just unbelievably benefited by things like that interactions like that so Tyler thank you for watching I appreciate it Motaz, thank you for watching, my friend. Jim Callahan, past apprentice and uh, Mug Club member. Jay Beckius, impressed with your work ethic. I want to repaint my main level, which is high traffic with three kids. Do you rec what would you recommend? Have you used scuff-resistant paint? Uh, actually, uh, there is a most. What's odd is that recently, uh, most paint is fairly scuff-resistant. If you use something with uh, at least a little bit of shine and a very high-end paint. Uh, I believe Benjamin Moore is it. I just saw some uh, press releases about a, a about a new, really really scuff resistant paint. Maybe it's called Scuff X or so. I saw it in passing, uh, but uh, you know I'm always curious about this stuff because I assume most of the paints that I use and, and they actually are fairly scuff resistant. The best thing I can tell you, and maybe once I get my hands on some of the uh, new paint, uh, I can give you a little better uh, indication of what it's like. But especially uh, in the main areas, uh, this is uh, I basically spent all my winters doing stairwells, hallways, entries, foyers, uh, bedrooms, things like that, where uh, people have big pets in their house, they have lots of kids, it gets a lot of traffic, uh, and a lot of the times I'm covering up builder's paint, which is just horribly marked up, and, and it's the worst paint ever. You go to wash it, it comes right off in the rag. I use at least an eggshell. In, in uh, the interior paints that I use, either a low luster or an eggshell, and if you get a very, very high quality paint, you can step the shine down a little bit. Uh, the benefit of that being that new drywall is a horrible product, full of flaws, it's got waves in it, dips, it's got nail pops, it's got cracks, it's got tape that's releasing from the corners, and the lowest amount of shine you can use will hide all those flaws. But the problem is then if you go too low with the shine, uh, you know, it'll start scuffing up again. So if you use a super high quality paint, you can bring the shine down a little bit, where if you use a really, really horrible paint, you've got to go almost semi-gloss to get the scuff resistance. So um, if two coats of that, uh, of a very, very high quality paint, should be at least scuff resistant as, as you need it for the house. So at least when you walk by and you, and you, you know, maybe rub your knuckles against the wall, it doesn't get uh, scuffed up or anything. So that's sort of the benefit of, uh, the best advice I could give you, very high quality paint, uh, and then probably an eggshell or a low luster. My, my goal is to find a plane. Normally paints go in, in the order of shine, flat, eggshell, satin, semi-gloss, gloss. Now there's a whole bunch of other companies that throw in low lusters, uh, matte, uh, soft gloss, things like that. But basically my goal is to get, there's always gonna be a flat. Whatever the shine level is right after that, whether it's an eggshell, low luster, matte, uh, you know, whatever else, somewhere the first shine level up, that's what I try to use on interiors of homes with new drywall uh, for that reason. You can go shinier if you want, but holy cow, you look down some of those big foyers or stairwell walls. If you use something, a uh, satin, semi-gloss, something like that, a lot of the times it just magnifies all those imperfections in there. So, all right, I'll take this time again to remind you that uh, anybody who uh, asked me a question during the live show here, you'll be entered to win one of my brand new Ask a Painter t-shirts with my new vintage logo, uh, one of my hats, and then I'll send you also one of the mugs too. So uh, later on in the show, uh, I'll have to go through here. I will, uh, I will pick out the question uh, out of the drawing and I will post it on this feed uh, when this video is archived and then I'll ask for your address and we'll, we'll send you all that stuff. So Scott Burt, thanks for watching. Uh, Jay Beckius, uh, or that scuff, scuff resistant, a paint that is easily washable. Uh, scuff resistance and washability go hand in hand with me. And uh, you know, everything is scuff resistant, everything is washable to a point. 
Uh, if you run a uh, a metal chair into a wall, you know it's drywall. It's soft. It's paint. It's soft. It's only going to do so much. But uh, with normal, you know, like you could imagine, my kids in their stairwell, uh, there is basically little hand marks from everything all the way from about waist level down because when they go up and down the stairs some of them can't reach the railing yet and they use the wall to, to do that. Uh, I found that a combination of super high quality paint, eggshell, matte, low luster finish and uh, magic erasers, uh, something my wife actually had taught me. Uh, you get those uh, Mr. Clean, I think they are, magic erasers, you wet them down, you wring them out, they're little white sponges and the texture of that sponge is actually what, what uh, helps get rid of the stuff. It's, it's soft, it won't uh, damage the surface, but it's got just enough grit in that uh, foam where it'll take a lot of that stuff off, and that's saved a lot of my walls in my house. And it helps that my walls are plaster too, it's a little bit harder. Sam, Sam watching, uh, Sherwin-Williams uh, from the Shockby store, moving on up. He's gonna be the president of, uh, of another store up in the Twin Cities. You'll be missed. Mike Aishans, good friend of mine, and his son is apprenticing with me. Adam Weisseidel, good friend of mine as well. Jim Callahan, see you next week. Yeah, we'll hope the, the weather holds out here. Uh, Rogerio, what's a reliable sprayer uh, machine for interior? Uh, Rogerio, why don't you tell me what you're spraying? Are you doing trim, walls, ceilings? Are you applying wall paint, ceiling paint, trim? Uh, kind of let me know, because uh, I have... Uh, uh, almost all companies of sprayers, uh, regularly available companies in, in sort of a lot of different, uh, you know, sort of outfits like that. So give me an example. And oh, Wes, Wes, uh, my friendly Sherwin-Williams rep, you should not be watching. You're up at your uh, land up north, probably hunting or fishing. Shouldn't be wasting your time on this. James Gilbert, thank you. Yep, no problem. Shane Sexsmith, thanks for watching. Christian Borst. Hey Nick, this is Christian with Crown Latex Agent. We have an extender for latex paint. Interested in giving it a try? Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, normally, you know, obviously, I, I try to use things that are readily available. Um, Floetrol, Benjamin Moore extender. I'm always willing to give something else a try. And, and Christian, I love your other products too. Uh, you know, you got the, uh, uh, the latex uh, paint hardener. You got the ceramic stuff too. Those are phenomenal, phenomenal products. And, and uh, uh, I did a uh, master's class for the PDCA, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America, this last year, and uh, you were actually one of the uh, one of the people who had helped me formulate a lot of the science of that too. I, I had a really hard time. You know, you go to the big companies and you try to get some molecular information. What does this molecule look like? Why does it act this way? And surprisingly, they either didn't know or weren't that forthcoming with it. Uh, maybe they thought I was trying to steal a trade secret, but I had the feeling like a lot of them didn't have the information. Uh, at hand to give me. Uh, Christian, you were awesome. Uh, you and your company helped me out with that. I, I really do appreciate it. And your third party input into that process just super refined my uh, my master's class on enameling interior cabinets like that. So thank you so And it made it helped me understand, you know, why things are the way they are. David Anderson, great information, Nick. Always have a great day. You too, sir. Thank you for watching. Jay Becky is thank you. Not a problem. Christian Schroyers. Thank you for watching as well. And uh, again, another, if anybody asks me a question down here, you'll be entered in to win one of the brand new t-shirts, brand new hats, and, uh, and of course, one of my mugs. Uh, and I'll send it to you here. Anybody who asks me a question during the live show here. <laughs> Adam, keep up the great work and info, no problem. Rogerio Freitas, uh, walls. Okay. Uh, for walls, I use, uh, for walls and ceilings, I sort of consider them the same. I have two sprayers. I have a Titan 440, uh, and then I have a Graco uh, 395 STS. Uh, and I use those sort of interchangeably, uh, water-based uh, water coatings. Uh, one of my, uh, let's see, the I have a Titan that's probably 18 to 20 years old that I use for that stuff, and I have my Graco. Uh, which is one of my favorite pumps, is, is 24 years old and counting. It's been in the trade as long as I have. And uh, basically, I just clean them out, make sure everything's good, and uh, maintain them well, you know, to the highest degree I can. I've, ne I've never had to do any work on them. But those uh, light, movable pumps, uh, when I'm doing interiors of, uh, of homes, residences, I don't need a monster uh, sprayer. Uh, people, you know, even dry fall. I've done uh, car dealerships where we've done dry fall on, uh, you know, uh, uh, metal joists, open metal joists up there, and I've just used my Titan 440. I mean, obviously I'm not doing an entire Walmart, but we're doing a large portion of a car dealership, and it, it performed perfectly, 
uh, it worked fine and uh, basically you know uh, six or seven years later using the same thing I haven't had to change any packings haven't had to do anything else on that thing just clean it like heck maintain it well oil it and it, and it works great so I use a, a smaller pump you know the entry-level professional ones uh, right at about that eight hundred to a thousand dollar level uh, the, the Titan 440s the uh, uh, Graco uh, 390s 395s I think mine is a 395 STS that's probably nomenclature that's not around anymore uh, I think they've gone to 390 but there's other pumps like that where that'll do you just fine and anything you do inside a house those pumps will uh, will definitely do that for you so uh, Jamie German thank you for watching and okay folks I'm gonna get back to work today here I don't see any other questions uh, thank you guys so much for watching this has been a year of ask a painter for me uh, we've done just about everything the first episode I ever did uh, was on color I had a great interaction with everybody uh, all these episodes are archived on the ask a painter Facebook page uh, they are also archived on uh, YouTube after a while. There's a there's a slight delay in loading them up, but they're all there for you guys if you ever want it. Yes, I am long-winded. Uh, last week's episode was over two hours long. I understand. The information is there if you want it. I just want this to be an archive. So in the future, I never expect somebody to sit through two hours of me talking to an ex uh, a restoration consultant. But if you've ever wanted to know anything from the practical side or the consultant side, that's a place to go. Okay, I just want this to be a, uh, an archive for, for a young contractor like myself who was starting off years ago who wanted this information but thought, well, either I have to be the guy in the polo shirt who drives around the Prius selling jobs or I have to be a laborer the rest of my life. I wish I knew there was somebody out there who cared just as much about the painting as the entrepreneurship uh, as me. And, uh, you know, I didn't think you could do both because I didn't see an example of it. And I just want this to be an example for the other young contractors out there that you can do both. You just have to give up a little of your free time and devote some time to your business. So, one of those things where, you know, this has been great. Uh, Ask a Painter takes time away from my business. but. I think it's been a good exercise in, in passing along information, information that, you know, has sort of been hard fought over 24 years for me. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is meant to be a forum for pros and homeowners to get together and refine our processes. Because if, if something as simple and free as typing in something down here saying, hey, try out this roller cover, changes somebody's life, speeds up their process by, by two times, that's the best thing in the world. And that's what this thing is here for. So thank you everybody for watching. Let's continue to interact here. I want this to be a forum. I'm just the moderator for it. And uh, it's going to be a great second year for Ask a Painter. Any suggestions you have for topics, I will definitely take those. Uh, anything you want to know about, uh, I'll be preparing some more master's classes for the PDCA. I'll also be preparing uh, mini master's classes and 20 minute trainings for this sort of thing. So anything you guys have ever wanted uh, to know about pros, uh, we can talk business, entrepreneurship, marketing, accounting, uh, and uh, safety, uh, the legal side of the business, homeowners, anything you've ever wanted to ask a professional painter, uh, just as simple as what do I need to paint a wall, I can lay it all out for you. So thanks everybody for watching. It's been an awesome year, such good interaction here, and uh, have a good rest of the week, have a good rest of the weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.